let's continue with our new invention, daguerreotype. It's new, uh, so it's not uh, as mature. It's not. It requires all kinds of part for it to work. Uh, camera obscura as the main part that that uh, dark box right here and some some other and the silver plate which is you know the the the, the surface that you cast the light part that you record the light particle onto and some other uh, chemical uh, treatments chemical iodine for example and as well as many other things sliding legs to hold it uh, things to develop the the, the, the silver plate uh, all host of things which means it's not at all portable again compared to the phone we have today this is not at all portable it requires more than one person to operate even and uh, well since we're in the United States that's uh, connected to the United States because uh, there's a name to mention that is Samuel Morse uh, who's the inventor of the telegraph he happened to be in Paris when Daguerre's invention was announced in the Academy of Science and Art he was the first to communicate the discovery to America hey you know there's this new thing that was this hot that was pretty hot, right? It's pretty new in Europe that we can uh, maybe uh, import the, the technology. Uh, and uh, well, here uh, Samuel Morse is shown next to his own uh, camera. And then so he, he, uh, And this is the first photograph uh, being taken in the United States of Robert Cornelius. Earliest portrait being taken uh, at the same year, the, the, the same year the Guerra photographed this one. So the United States was pretty early, right? it was pretty up to date. I should say, in in adapting this technology and learning, incorporating this technology into into you know, establishing this technology in the United States. <clears throat> and here is uh, another person that uh, we should mention uh, because he invented a different way to record the light particle is not daguerreotype it's not light particle on a silver plate but on a paper his name is William Henry Fox Tabot um, well Tabot was himself a intellectual elite uh, educated in Cambridge and uh, he the what, what what's special about the calotype well calotype is on paper that's the first thing and another is that uh, it involves for the first time involves the negative and the positive negative is something something that you can put kind of like uh, <clears throat> the older-fashioned camera that you put the films you put the negative into uh, inside of that dark box the camera camera obscura uh, this is the camera and then uh, record it uh, you know uh, click the button and then the we, we recorded everything on the negative and you can bring home you can wait until you get home to de to develop it onto a positive and that positive is it's a, it's a paper so the negative is one surface and the positive is another surface that you would develop the the image onto and positive is the end product that you have um what does that mean well first of all it means that now you can take more than one photograph or you can develop you can make more than one photograph 
with the same negative, you can reproduce. You can reproduce the, that image. That means it, it's it's a great news for the print media, newspaper, right? Where they need mass production of things that you can establish a business with it with this technology. Uh, second of all, is that you don't need to bring so many metals, right? The, all these heavy metals uh, with you uh, outside outdoor or wherever you you need to take the photograph uh, you can just bring a negative and wait till you get home wait till you get to that dark room right to to develop it uh, compared to say daguerreotype or, or some other technologies our earlier technologies you need to bring that dark room along with you you need to carry the dark room on a wagon, for example, and carry it all the way to wherever you want to take the picture, which is extremely inconvenient and hard to explash it, how to expand, hard to expand that business. So Taybot did something uh, different, contributed it in a different way with Calotype. And he, 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 he discovered this, uh, well, kind of accidentally through uh, one day, you know, putting some kind of uh, salt paper print, uh, treated the paper with salt. And uh, he found that he was able to record the shape, the light and shades onto the, pa uh, uh, onto the paper, to print that light and shade onto the paper. And he, he started to, to go from there and then eventually... Uh, developed the invented the color type and then he 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 was he, he was pretty he, he was pretty ambitious with the color type so that he he wrote books he published uh, magazines that, you know uh, this is a, a a magazine that he published the pencil of nature it's the first book of photographic images and first publication to explain and illustrate the scientific and practical application of photography he wants to promote it he knows this he can he can establish this as he, he has a great business right and he also i don't know if you noticed the book right here is also patented right make it a patent so that he can make more money off of it but did it work right did did it work or did the daguerreotype work we're gonna figure that out later but what's what's so significant about Calotype, uh, type this new word, new term that we need to learn today. What's so significant about it? It's the reproducibility of photograph and making it more practical. And <clears throat> and you know, uh, Tabot also won the show off or show or to demonstrate that his color type worked no worse or even better than daguerreotype right it's, it's because he wants to expand this as, as, as a, a business um so he so this is the the photograph that he uh, uh took with color type and uh, sent to to to, to 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 people to demonstrate and uh, which one's better you think to get again it is just uh i would say this is a a, a little bit of object right in the image and uh, the same logic uh that we used in this right well, why the girl why the girl uh picked all these objects different objects the same logic maybe we can apply to this image right the broom right the outside the light and the indoor the darkness again to show the ability to ref to reveal all this 
a minute change in the light and shade. See the lantern, the harness, right? That reflects light and shade. The window inside of the barn of the of the, of the house, at the doorway, at the open door, outdoor and indoor, both able to capture. So again, it's a it's a scene, right? There's a purpose behind. So I want you to. Why I explain this is is that I want you to uh, I want to I want you to know that there's a purpose behind all kinds of uh, photographing, uh, capturing this this scene specifically. Why? Because it needs to show the ability indoor outdoor shade light and all kinds of other detail interior exterior form and texture of the broom texture of the lantern. The the metal texture of the lantern, the the now uh, branches on the wall, harness reflecting some sorts of light bricks, all different textures to show that okay, color type works pretty sharp, right? And it's also you uh, can can be reproduced. And it's on paper, not as heavy, not as expensive. Isn't it a better deal? Isn't it a more potential technology about photography to be developed? My question would be at the end: which one, right, the garotype or calotype? Which one became a can become a Commercial success. Daguerre didn't uh, didn't uh, claim the the patent uh, for uh, for this his new invention, but Tabat, uh, William Henry Tabat did. Fox Tabat did. Um, I want you to to go back to your textbook. I, I want to skip that part. Right, go back to textbook and f and find out that answer. Daguerreotype, calotype, right? Which one do you think becomes a can can become a commercial success? Can become the unicorn at the, of, of that time of the nineteenth century? I mean, uh, yes, nineteenth century. And I can give you a hint, right? By by the commercial success, I mean. Portraits. I mean, port mainly portraitures, uh, because uh, portraitures been it, it's there is a de always a demand even before uh, camera obscura came along. Uh, there is uh, this demand of portraiture. So uh, this new technology, the together the, the uh, photography, uh, is first used or uh, expanded in uh, the business of portraiture. But there's daguerreotype and calotype. This is just one technology uh, uh, between these two uh, wins this competition, wins the market. Which one would it be, right? So uh, why I ask that question because I want you to know the difference first of all, right? In the 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 pros and cons for each uh, of this new invention, um, this new uh, Ways of uh, photography, daguerreotype and calotype. That's the main thing for our lecture today. I want you to to do a little bit of research in your textbook. Okay. Very lastly, I want to just mention a little bit these uh, a, a a little bit of the social, cultural, uh, or even scientific historical background for. This invention, uh, for this invention of photography, uh, uh, Daguerre and uh, ne even the earlier Neapses, uh, who who invented the blurry heliograph, the blurry image outside, looking outside of this window, uh, they're Frenchmen, and uh, Fox Tabat, William Fox Tabat, is a is a British. 
And uh, in the 19th and 20th century, these two empires, these two countries, was, uh, well, French Empire was the second largest behind the British Empire. They were uh, reigning supreme uh, in many fronts in the world at the time. So they had this, uh, they had the more advanced resources to for for maybe new technology to come into friction to come into friction um, and let's zoom out even more 18th and 19th century in the u.s and europe right the intensification of capitalism in europe and the u.s shift from mercantile capitalism to industrial capitalism mass production industrial factories And then other technological developments and advancements, including the invention of steam engine, electricity, you know, by Edison, the light bulbs, right? Acceptance and, and development of enlightenment uh, and deployment of enlightenment thinking, this new thinking, a new wave of intellectual, of new scholars promoting new ways uh, of thinking, for example, like Nietzsche, philosophers, scholars, and rise of nation states. But these are some of the backdrops for the invention of, of photography. And photography as an invention in the 19th century, it is not alone. There are other things, right? There are other technology, technological inventions uh, between that that uh, happened between 19, uh, 1826. 1826, uh, if I can remind you of this very important photograph, you need to memorize this view from the window at Graz, 1826 by Niepce. You just need to remember the last name. It was a Frenchman. 1826 to 19. 03. 80 years of time, X ray, airplane, motion pictures, film, which is film, uh, radio light bulbs by Edison, by Thomas Edison, the telephone, electric motor, sewing machine, telegraph, uh, and, and dynamite, a typewriter, electric motor, uh, you name it. Go, the list goes on and on and on, photography being one important figure in them. So photography is not alone again. It's um, in the midst of this, of this craze for new invention, new technology, new wave, a new society, nation states, right? New modes of society so people are continue are, are actively uh, pursuing science to make change to society to build a new society to build new thinking enlightenment thinking and build and with that thinking to build new society so photography was against this very exciting background when it was invented and the reason I mentioned that background is that I want you to not just look at photography as one thing that's from uh, that's you know invented from the past and that continue to be used today I want you to 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 zoom out and use a wider uh, uh, way of thinking ways of thinking seeing to probe into photography it's it's a member it's a constitute <clears throat> it's constitutive of modernity and the photography in turn shaped in the modern condition Right? It's, it's one of the many inventions, but this invention 
shape our understanding of this society that's being always being invented and reinvented, shaping modern condition, right? The, mo the modernity produced photography, right? Because it's among all these different dimensions, new technologies, but and then in turn, photography changed our way of understand modernity through through providing us different ways of seeing. And thus we have a, always a renewed modern way of seeing the world. Just as literally what photography means. Always riding with light. Photography, if we may if I may suggest to you, is writing history still nowadays writing history with light with its understanding of light with 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 drawing your attention drawing the light to different corners in the world so so susan sontag this theorist in photography famous theorist in, in photography he says as she says to collect photography is to collect the world.